In this installment of the APOC video series, we want to look at the APOC load JSON procedure, which allows us to consume JSON from either files or web APIs. As you know, many um, APIs uh, offer their data as, as JSON, and uh, that's quite handy to pull into Neo4j. So we take our um, Neo4j desktop with um, APOC installed. We check what kind of load procedures are there. Uh, some of them we will cover uh, in later series. Uh, there's epoch load bold, so where we can pull data from other Neo4j databases, load CSV, which adds a little bit on top of uh, load CSV, load JDBC, which we'll cover later, load JSON, our topic for today. Uh, and we can also load from LDAP and XML. Okay, cool. And uh, as we also need some data, we can have a look at the Stack Overflow API, um, which allows us really easily to pull data from Stack Overflow via um, the API. And in this case, we have an URL here that pulls um, Neo4j tagged questions or the descendings or the latest 100 uh, from this uh, Stack Overflow site. And if you run this uh, statement, we basically get a JSON like this back. Um, so items is the top level uh, entry in this uh, in this object and Within the items, we get uh, questions. So each of these entries in an item is a question. And uh, then we get uh, for each question tags, answers, and for the uh, and an owner, and then kind of the metadata about the question, and title and uh, body, basically. So that's what each question looks like. So if we access this from, from APOC, we basically take our URL. We can just set. Um, this as a parameter, uh, so we don't have to repeatedly type this again, uh, and then get started basically. Uh, so we can call epoch load uh, JSON uh, of this URL, and if you don't do anything, then we get just the JSON back. There we go. Uh, let me change the page size to something smaller for the time being, and we change it back later. Uh, let's say five, so it loads a little bit faster. So. Okay, cool. So in a few milliseconds, we got our data. And here is this top level item. Uh, of course, we don't uh, want to have like this top level item, but we want to have all uh, questions. So this is currently one record. But what we want to do is we want to unwind value.items as question or Q, return Q. And so we see now we get five records because we had five in our uh, page size. And now we can, for each of these uh, records, we can actually return uh, the keys. So we see again what are the our keys that are available. And as we saw before, we have the owner, which is a nested one. Answers is also nested. And all the other ones are top level, except for tags, which is an um, array. So what we can do now is basically um, return question.title, uh, question.tags. Uh, question dot uh, for instance is answered and uh, question dot owner dot and if you look at our JSON our owner has a uh, display name for instance and uh, if you run this we see uh, so you see we can also nest uh, access here. Um, if we wanted to, we could also only get a subset of the text array, like uh, one, two, three, or something like that. But now we want to get actually all text. And if we do this, we see this is our question, uh, the text, uh, is it answered, yes or no, and who answered it. Of course, you should also return the question that ID. So, and, oops, it's called, let's see, question ID or something like that. Question ID. So, so that this gives us the ability to quickly load uh, data from there. And uh, now we can basically use this information to create data in a graph. So instead of returning it to us, we can uh, basically say, uh, we want to create a question uh, from question with this ID, question ID, and then uh, on create set and we want to send the uh, 
the title, uh, this, um, this answer tag, and uh, for the owner we actually want to create its own node. So we say um, merge user name and this is our name. Usually we would do it by ID, uh, but I just quickly do it by name. And then we just say uh, merge uh, this user answered our question. So, and for tags, we actually want to go over these tags and create one node per tag. So that means we want to go, for instance, with for each, for each tag. We want to merge a uh, tag on the tag name and then merge this question is uh, tagged with this tag. Right. So, and then uh, if you run this, it should almost work. It does not like my display name. Oh, the comma is too much here. So, and uh, here it should be a tag. So, and as you see, I created 18 uh, nodes and 19 relationships. And if I look at my data here, I see actually my little graph of questions and answers and tags. And you also see that some tags have been repeatedly uh, tagged, especially in A4J tag. And of course, if I want to run this now for, now for all queries, uh, for all questions, I can just uh, do it with one single call. So for the whole query, we can just uh, copy this uh, statement from uh, the documentation, which uh, creates um, the whole graph with questions, answers, uh, posters and answerers in one go. So let's see if this works. Uh, we just run this and uh, now it created 365 nodes uh, for this 100 uh, questions. And if you look at the data, uh, it's, it's all there. So you see a big uh, graph of connected information and if you move the if for J node, then you see that it flows out here. Yeah. If you have to create more data than this, then you can use uh, APOC periodic iterate, which we'll talk about in a later installment. And uh, with that, um, I leave you with our regular uh, closing words. Uh, so if you want to know more about all of this, uh, join us on Slack and ask there. Otherwise, you can check out the uh, documentation and the repository on uh, this bit.ly link and go to the YouTube uh, channel for more videos. Thank you.